Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. We're back at Giga Texas again. It's Wednesday, the 26th of April, and there's always a lot going on. Today you'll see that I fly a little lower altitude because of the weather. A lot of mist, a lot of rain, low clouds, but still a lot to see. And I also want to talk more about the equipment that we saw being installed over by the cathode plant and uh, I will do an in-depth discussion here and I hope that you enjoy it. Again, this is my interpretation of what we're seeing and possible use of this material in the cathode plant. And a lot of people may have other opinions and that's great. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are in the video comments. So without uh, further delay, let's get into the discussion about that equipment by the cathode plant. On my previous video, I identified these items that have been installed right next to the battery cathode plant in that uh, area where they also have the chiller system installed. And I speculated that this may be for nitrogen and I misidentified the uh, tall silver things as condensers. They're actually vaporizers. So I wanted to come back and give you some additional information, correct that, and give you an idea of what these are, how they might be used, and the significance that they're being installed at the battery cathode plant. Now I was able to identify those large white tanks as Matheson tanks, and I mentioned that they were liquid nitrogen. I believe that is most likely the case, but Matheson is a national producer and distributor of liquid nitrogen. They produce supplies both in liquid and gas phases, and they offer all kinds of different containers and solutions for industrial companies. As I mentioned earlier, these tall silver items are actually vaporizers and they're used for nitrogen generators. And they use ambient air and natural convection to heat the cryogenic fluid, usually nitrogen, but it could be argon or other noble gases. And they use a heat exchange tube system. It evaporates the gases in an energy efficient way. Now, as mentioned, Matheson provides a lot of different types of gas solutions to industrial companies. As you can see here, quite a few of different kinds of gases are used, but for this application, I believe it's a noble or an inert gas and most likely in nitrogen, and we'll discuss why. Let's discuss what a nitrogen generator is and how it is uh, operated. The upper left shows a Giga Texas installation. The bottom right shows an illustration of how a nitrogen generator system is installed using the tanks, the ambient air vaporizers, control manifolds, and then the outlet for the gaseous product. This is used in a range of industries where you need to have a very high 99.5% or higher pure commercially sterile uh, nitrogen. And it's also, from an industrial standpoint, more reliable, compact, and easy to use and install a system like this than shipping in constantly new supplies of nitrogen. And just to highlight again the installation, you can see item one, the tank, and how it corresponds to Giga Texas. Item two, the ambient air vaporizer and how it corresponds also to the installation at Giga Texas. And three is that control manifold. And you can see them being set up right now uh, at this uh, installation at Giga Texas. Now I have a number of links there in the slides that you've just seen and also in the video description if you would like to learn more. This is a brief overview discussion and I do hope that you found this information helpful and it puts into context what we are seeing happening here at Giga Texas. So without further ado, let's uh, get the drone in the air and let's see what's going on here at Giga Texas today. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. Well, as you can see, it's quite foggy, at least uh, cloudy at this altitude, a lot of mist and some rain. Uh, so I'm going to stay a little bit lower today for at least on the south side, uh, just so I can keep the visibility as good as possible. It will clear up later in the day. Now here on the south end of the cyber pond, we see some of these trucks here at the bottom right that has more of the rebar and that's being used to create the rebar cages for the auger piles and we'll talk about that in a little 
bit, but first I wanted to show you this very large delivery. This is one of several of these large crates being brought in by these trucks. You can see by the trailer that they're very heavyweight. You can also see that they do not have the markings for Idra. In fact, we'll see these crates uh, being moved over to the south end temporary loading platform and moved up into the third floor of General Assembly. So it's most likely that this is equipment that supports uh, the General Assembly production and it's not the Idra Gigapress. I know that some people have said that there may be some parts arriving, but I did not see that today. As we continue to move over towards the east side of this south end, we can see the continuous flight auger system in progress. They are creating these auger piles and uh, it's essentially a concrete reinforced with rebar pile system and this is used to provide the strength for footings that will support a structure. And I'll go into that a little more detail in a future video. But as you can see, they're working on the southeast corner near the stamping machine structure right now. As I pan back to the west, this gives you a good idea of the ground and the grade work that is going on here to prepare this for construction. Also, as mentioned, here is another one of those very large deliveries being brought in by these trucks with some pretty heavy lift trailer system. Now, this is being prepared, as you can see, for lifting by that crane up onto that loading platform and then moved inside for a general assembly. And uh, we'll also see more of these crates arriving. At least four have arrived this morning, all going into this section. And just reiterate it again, this is not Idra Giga Press parts. This is something completely different. So I'll pull back, uh, give you a wider view of the work that's going on here on the south end to prepare this grade. You can see that center dump truck bringing more of the dirt that is actually coming from the north side of the battery cathode plant. And uh, you can see a number of those trucks uh, having that dirt here to help with the grade work. And overall, this uh, grade has been raised uh, probably a meter or two across the entire south and it continues to have that work done ahead of the construction. As I continue to pull back, uh, one of the things I'll show you near this trailer is you'll see this pile of rebar cages right at the bottom of the screen. These are cages that have recently been made and they're being temporarily stored here. And these will be put into that continuous flight auger piles as they are created. Now, a little bit north of here, and I'll uh, after I give you a close-up there, as we'll see the crews working on the left-hand side of the screen, creating even more. You can see that forklift bringing those bags of uh, rebar sections, and you can see two stations here with crews making those rebar cages. There's a lot of other work that is going on uh, nearby here as well. This view uh, with a little bit of a zoom in gives you that view of the cages being built. But up near the southwest corner of the building, we see more trench work uh, going on as well, right next to that uh, kind of raised black uh, groundwater well. And also near here, you can see some of the excavation work that's going on. It looks like there's some pipes in that small excavation, sort of in the middle left of the screen, and then another very large excavation being done closer to the building. So very interesting as they continue to prep this side for that construction. As we proceed further to the north, there's a good view of this new temporary loading platform. You can see that the loading top, kind of that uh, wooden top has now been installed. That's been done in the last 48 hours. So it's at the height necessary for them to begin using this uh, for deliveries. And again, I think this is gonna replace that one on the south so that construction on that south end can continue. As we proceed further to the north, uh, one thing I noticed is this truck here, and it looks like it has some pipes that are being delivered inside this section where more of the assembly lines two and three are being installed. We can also see on the walls here and the windows, quite a bit of plastic protecting the windows for that stain work. And you can also see some of the lights along the side of the building have got uh, tape put on them, that kind of that blue tape for protection. So we should see some of the stain work going on here all across this larger window section. Now here at the main entrance, work continues to reconfigure this. Again, we're adding these steel structures that uh, 
progressively get larger as we move away from the windows. And you can also see some of the wood panels put on the concrete on the bottom to protect it. And also we can clearly see what looks like mounting points on top of each of the beams. That suggests that there's gonna be some sort of roof treatment. Um, and I'm curious to see what that is going to be once they get it completed. But I would expect to see some kind of steel work put on the top to partially or fully enclose that section. As I pull away, you can see this landscape section now it looks like they have some tables and chairs and also uh, a truck is temporarily uh, parked there. And as we move back in, this gives you a really good view of how this uh, steel structure and the architectural treatment of the main entrance appears today. And again, you can see those mounts on top of each of the beams, which suggests that something is going to be added there in the near future. And here's a good view of the north side of here. Uh, you can see some materials being stockpiled on the left and also some blue tarps by the, end, the bottom of the walls. I think that's for the stain that's going to be applied on the uh, walls here very soon. See activity with that ramp and uh, also more crews here preparing this section with the plastic wrap on the windows for that staining process. As I turn towards the west, you can see this uh, sort of landscape section with a grate like surface now has a grass belt put onto it on the right hand side. And you can see some purple irrigation pipes. And then also what looks to be chairs and maybe tables uh, next to those obelisk like items that the forklift is moving. So, a very interesting uh, thing I'll continue to track so we can figure out what those are exactly. As I proceed more to the north, a couple of things that I want to show you is uh, first, there's this very large tank here. Um, it's uh, sitting by itself and it looks like it's uh, tinsy. And I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it's some sort of commodity. We can also see here Matheson deliveries of liquid nitrogen and that nitrogen tank, uh, that silver one on the left. Now, this is the same company that's installing the tanks over at the battery cathode plant. And it's another indication that we'll be seeing nitrogen over that section as well. I'll bring the drone up over the roof just to give you a current view of this northwest corner. The enclosures that have those temporary scaffolds with some of the plastic that's been ripped away by the winds. And also the event system showing that activity is going on in the 4680 production cell today. Now brought the drone down on the north end. Take a look at some of the activity on these loading platforms. Looks like some materials are being loaded into this uh, smaller or lower platform on the right. You can see another large orange truck that had some recent deliveries. And here next to the platform, we can see two Model Y bodies. I believe these are in primer. Uh, so it's not a gray color, but it's actually just a gray primer and a white primer. And these look like they may be 2170 variants of the body. You also see some deliveries on that particular platform. And as I pull back, we'll continue towards the northeast corner of the casting machine structure. And you can see that there are seven Model Y bodies here. Some of them are 4680s without the, the floors and have the front casting. And some of them are 2170 variants. We see some work going on in the berm here. More of the castings uh, being laid out on this section. We also see more berm work on the left-hand side of the screen and quite a bit of castings uh, set aside here on the east side of the casting machine structure. I'll bring the drone up and give uh, kind of a top-down view of this activity and the number of castings that are being stored here until they're moved over into the body of white to create the vehicles. And also just a good view of this uh, east parking lot and how busy it is today. As I turn back, another view of all these castings and the racking systems on the east side here. It certainly looks like that work continues at a very fast pace. 
and uh, trying to keep up with the production rate of the Model Ys. As we go over the power lines and come back down, I'll show you the current status of this Megapack construction site. Looks like there's some uh, gray pipes. These are usually conduit pipes that have been delivered on the right-hand side of the screen. And then also the trailer section with uh, some of the materials in this fenced off section as well. It looks like more materials have been de delivered here, including some steel pipes for the electrical system in the last 48 hours. Here next to this clearing, we can see more of the underground stormwater pipe installation. And it looks like it's continuing to progress towards the south. And this connects all around the north and east side of the electrical switchyard as well. As we continue to climb and uh, prepare to go over the power lines, this is a good view from this vantage point of how this electrical switchyard looks. The perimeter fence appears to be uh, completed, and that indicates that uh, power can be uh, applied to the electrical switchyard, which is a great milestone. We also see much of the uh, high tension wires have been routed from these new steel power poles over to the electrical switchyard, which is a great sign as well. And I'll give you a quick view looking back towards the main factory here of how this looks today. Uh, pretty much all of the steel Assembly work has been completed. The cable tray trenches, you can see those gray trenches have been completed as well. All of the wires connected over here into this control room. And another view, a little lower altitude of how this perimeter fence appears today. More work going on near these two electrical transformers. It's possible that uh, that uh, shiny steel tank may have brought some of the oil that's used for those transformers. And you can see one of those large gray tanks. And, and that's part of the way that the transformer systems work. As I turn the drone to the south, we see that electrical temporary switch yard and some of the materials being arranged here. You can see the uh, steel corrugated pipe, which will be used for that underground water management system. And also the trailers here, which are used by Tesla for some of their temporary offices. On the left-hand side of the screen, we see these blue water pipes and also the long HDPE treated water pipes. Still here waiting for more assembly. Some trench work continues near the south end of the temporary lined pond. And I believe that they are preparing to start uh, installing that HDPE pipe through this section. As we approach at the dye shop, uh, here's a good view of the southwest corner. You can see the large Tesla branded uh, bridge crane, that red one. And also you can see that second floor mezzanine in that center bay has expanded and looks nearly completed. Now the permit is for a single story building, but they're using the mezzanine to give it uh, an effectively a second story. As I pull away here, you can see that all four of the transfer boxes, these green square boxes have been installed now and you can see the electrical conduit. This is a great sign, which means that they're nearing the point where the electrical conduit installation for these buildings is uh, completed and that will bring the power needed for production. You can see a lot more of the wall panels have been installed, especially on the south end and the crane installing more as well on that roof section, pretty much completing this east side exterior wall installation. More on the ground on that trailer and laying on the ground for installation soon. As we approach the west side of the battery cathode plant, these are those Matheson tanks and also the vaporizers. And we talked about this in the intro of the video. So hopefully that gives you a lot of information and context about what we're seeing here. But this is basically a nitrogen generator system and it's composed of the tanks, the tall silver vaporizers, and there's uh, manifolds uh, being prepared on the ground uh, as well. So check out the intro again for more information. The north end of the die shop has all of the wall panels installed. Some on the west side here and uh, the deep foundation with the concrete work is still in the curing process. 
And again, that yellow moisture barrier and the orange covers are helping with that curing process. But uh, it looks like it's uh, pretty close to uh, its final configuration. Soon we'll see the forms removed, all that plastic removed, and then maybe we'll start seeing the rest of the ground slab here completed. Now on the roof, we see crews continue to work to install the insulation and the weatherproof membranes on the roof section and it's growing considerably from the north working its way towards the south. Here's a good view of the west side of the battery cathode plant. Also some more trench work with blue water pipes uh, being installed here on this section. It also looks like there's a groundwater issue that pumping out that water so they can continue to work. Now here on the north end, the one of the steel, steel galvanized tanks has actually been moved, which is a change. We also see quite a bit of work going on in the third floor of the battery cathode plant. And on the ground floor, we can see that those green low levelers have been installed in those five receiving doors. Uh, also, as we continue to look towards the east, we can see that this uh, cell test lab is definitely coming along. It looks like it's got some sort of a heater unit installed on the east side there, that silver pipes. And uh, overall, that building has uh, the look of being nearly completed now. Here on the east side, we can see some more of the wall panels have been installed, partially completing the installation in that open section. We see more of the Evapco uh, fan units uh, waiting for installation, some of the plastic temporary enclosures for that section of the building as well. More of these red and white platform components waiting for installation. And then here we have these interestingly shaped items near where the workers are. And I'm not sure exactly what they are, but uh, it'll be interesting to see where those eventually get installed. The platforms continue to be installed here and assembled. You can see it's now at a couple of levels and then they'll be moved in by this crane. And just on the inside, you can see on the north end, more of those platforms have already been installed. So here's a good overall view of the battery cathode and die shop complex of buildings and how it looks today. This north uh, of the Warehouse on Wheels material staging yard continues to get more and more equipment and items. We see some of these white shrink wrapped items on the right and also here on the left. Now a viewer mentioned that these are TKS items and this is part of a paint uh, system and I don't know if this is related to the Cybertruck production or what they're doing, maybe additional a capability to the current paint shop, but uh, interesting to see those very large items arriving here on the site. Now we can see these now almost four rows of Model Ys being stored here next to these white items, which are more of the light posts that are used in the parking lot. I'm not sure why they are continuing to store these Model Ys here, but it is uh, definitely an interesting uh, development and the more of the Model Ys uh, continue to stockpile over on this section of the uh, site. As we fly over the warehouse on wheels towards the southeast, this is kind of a good view of this new clearing area, which is partially being used, it looks like, for some material storage. We have some concrete panels on the uh, left and we have some trailers on that southeast corner as well, and some more materials on that southwest corner. I'm still not sure exactly what they're building here or what will be uh, put in place, but uh, definitely something worth uh, watching. So I'll fly around, give you a little different uh, views of how this is appearing today as we look back towards the main factory. up here to the smaller parking lot which is the new vehicle testing calibration lot we see this wind tunnel with the turntable uh, looks like it's not in use right now but there are some what appears to be wall panels uh, on concrete bases on the left hand side near that green 
temporary generator. The parking lot here is very full, so is the testing loop here on the uh, south side with all of the yellow and some of the um, uh, places where they test out the brakes and the suspension. We see all of the canopies for the superchargers now have been installed. And as I turn back, we can see the new vehicle staging and transportation lot. Many trucks lined up to pick up more of the Model Ys here. And uh, it looks, you know, about half empty from what we normally see. I'm not sure if it's just an indication that more of them have been moved off site or if they are doing something different. But overall, uh, I think that was a good look on this misty, rainy, and low cloud day here at Giga Texas. I hope you enjoyed what we talked about, the intro and that discussion, and all of the things that we saw and discussed throughout, throughout the video. As always, thank you very much for your support and for watching. I very much appreciate it, and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care.